Hello and welcome to this third video on some of the modulation options in Hive 2. If you missed the early ones, you may like to review them before watching this video as things will make a bit more sense to you. In the first video, I looked at the modulation matrix and their slot modifiers. And in the second uh, tutorial, I looked at the shape sequencer. Uh, but in this video, I'm going to be examining the function generators in more detail. So let's get started. I'll begin by initializing a patch in Hive 2. I simply right click and select init. Uh, for those of you on a on a uh, on a Mac, you I think you press Control Option. And to begin with, uh, this is the patch. I'm just going to turn down the altogether the um, the low pass filter, so we can't hear the sound. Um, effectively muting it because the filter is filtering out everything. But to open and close the filter, let's assign LFO1 to the cutoff. So I'm going to take LFO1 and drag that to the cutoff. Now, uh, when I, I can either adjust the depth of cutoff by uh, dragging up on that little orange uh, blob, like so, or I can adjust it down here in the modulation matrix, which also, as you can see, visibly shows you the amount of modulation. So in order to show you visually what's going on with the function generators, I'm going to take advantage of Hive's excellent scope facility. So I'm going to switch that on now onto scope. At the moment it's set to an audio waveform, but if I uh, drag the LFO over to the, uh, over to the window, you'll see that it's displaying the output of the LFO. And if I slow it down, you'll see that the rate slows down. So I'm going to set this now to a square wave. So square wave high low and the display will change accordingly. So LFO1 is effectively opening and closing the filter following the shape of a square wave uh, LFO. Like so. But let's set the input of uh, function 1. Let's set the input to be LFO1. And let's put the uh, output of um, function 1 into the window so we can compare it. Now I'm going to set it to follow so that it follows the... Uh, we'll, we'll look at all the various modes throughout the tutorial. But if we look, if we set it to follow, you'll notice how the uh, waveform, uh, the function 1 envelope, follows uh, LFO1. And if we have a listen again... There we are. Now if you... Uh, if we now increase the attack stage you'll see that now the left-hand edge of the function 1 envelope is slowing, is giving us that slope. It's a slower attack until we, we, there we go, until we go too far. And if I adjust, similarly, if I adjust the decay time, bring the decay time up, you'll see that the decay is increasing like so. Now if I slow down the oscillator, even uh, the LFO even more, you can see the effect of the slope. So if I now bring the slope value like so, you'll see it, the curve in the slope. And if I take it in the other direction, you'll see the curve in the opposite direction. So that's the effect when we um, use it in follow mode. So uh, let's assign now the output of the function generator uh, to control the filter rather than LFO1. So to do that, let's drag uh, function generator 1, the envelope output, to control the cutoff. And you'll see it appear down here. Now let's switch off um, filter 1 cutoff and let's bring up uh, from the LFO one. Let's bring it up from the function envelope and you'll see that now it decays away slowly. And likewise, if we bring up the attack time, It's fading up. Sorry, I'll take the slope off. 
So it fades up in a linear fashion and let's adjust the decay time again and you'll see that it's... You'll see that we're, we're modifying effectively the LFO uh, values and sending those to the filter. So as you can see in the follow mode the um, function generator is behaving a bit like the slew limiter that we saw uh, earlier in the first video um, but with a bit more control. So let's have a look at another use of the function generator. I'm going to switch the LFO back to be being the trigger and switch off the function generator as being the trigger and I'm going to select a sawtooth waveform saw down like so. So we've gone uh, if I adjust the, the rate up We've gone back to uh, opening and closing the filter, but this time with a with a saw waveform. So let's take the attack and the decay time down to zero, and we'll uh, set the function mode instead of uh, follow. We'll put it onto envelope. We'll go through all the all the uh, modes one at a time. But uh, so now we're listening to the the LFO. Let's just slow it down a wee bit. And uh, now let's go back to um, assigning the function envelope to the filter cutoff. And you'll see that with the attack and the decay at zero, we're getting a mere blip. But if I increase the decay time, we now uh, can create that sound by increasing the decay and if I bring up the attack we're softening the front edge and the two together gives us what we'd associate with a traditional envelope so let's have a look at another mode of the function generator I've switched it to one shot if we have a listen to that now you'll see that in one shot mode we obviously we've got attack and decay stages are very very low, so if I mimic the uh, LFO, like so, so about, about the one o'clock position there, it's behaving much as the LFO did. And indeed, if we were to switch between them now, you'd hardly spot any difference. But if I increase the decay time to beyond the width of the LFO, um, you effectively get a clock divider. So now, for every two cycles of the LFO, we're triggering the function generator envelope. I'll bring it back again. And once I once the um, decay length exceeds the, the width of the LFO, it will trigger every other time, giving us a clock divider effect. And if I keep going, It's now every fourth, and I think, yep, yeah, we can get it to last over eight. So that's the difference, uh, that's the one-shot mode. Now one-shot mode is similar to envelope, but if, you, if I switch it now to envelope, you'll see that... In envelope mode, because it's not a one shot, when we increase the decay time, we're getting that effect rather than because it's behaving just like an envelope rather than um, rather than in one shot mode, which is effectively being triggered once each time the envelope is triggered, which is giving us the clock divider effect. So the three we've looked at now is envelope mode, one shot and follow. Let's have a look at the next one, the cycle modes. Now the cycle modes are a little bit harder to describe. So what I'll do is I'll switch this back to, uh, I'll show you visually what's going on by switching again to uh, a square wave. And we're gonna put this onto a cycle on off mode. And I'll dial the values down to zero. Now um, it's basically, uh, the cycle on off mode and the cycle mode are looping envelopes but the loop only continues when the input signal is above zero so if I uh, 
if I uh, slow it down and play it to you, you'll hear as I reduce the uh, uh, decay time, the attack decay time is occurring within this section, the uh, the on section effectively of the LFO. Let's turn it down again and turn down the speed of the LFO. So you'll see that the um, the cycle envelope is only cycling during the periods when the value of LFO is effectively 1. So the, the um, cycling is occurring when the value is, is up there. So uh, when I now switch it to cycle uh, trigger mode, you'll see that as long as I hold down the uh, the key, the cons it's constantly cycling. Put it back to uh, on-off mode. And you'll notice as well that it's um, the cycle on-off mode retains the value, if you look at the values there, as to where the cycle ended. So that's why it's opening and closing the filter at slightly different values, because the cycle is repeating at a different... The, the cycle isn't in perfect sync with the, uh, the LFO waveform. So in the uh, cycle on-off mode, if I switch back to um, a sawtooth waveform, you can see that by adjusting the rate of the sawtooth, you can get a variety of interesting combination uh, output waveforms. by adjusting the speed of the LFO and the decay phase, that they, they become much less predictable. So you can get some quite interesting results this way, and obviously you could assign that to uh, not just a filter, you could assign that to pitch and experiment uh, accordingly. Earlier on in this video we looked at the follow mode and how it behaved like a slew limiter rounding off the attack and the decay stages. The follow gate mode is similar except that it only functions as long as a note is being held. Uh, so what I've done is to uh, hear the effect. If you leave it uh, set down you won't hear the effect. But if I um, bring up the release time and uh, slow down the, the value, when I uh, pl play a note quickly you'll hear that uh, so well, as soon as I release it continues at the f at the value that it was uh, set to before if I play a longer note it therefore puts out that level as soon as the, the, the level that the waveform is at when I release the notes so if I release the note at the end of the cycle we effectively hear nothing if I leave it if I release the note in the early part of the cycle it effectively sustains at that level. So that's the uh, the follow gate mode. Now, as well as the various uh, envelope modes that you can use the function generator for, which uh, we've looked at, you can also use the function generator to generate gates. Um, and it will send a gate value, um, for example, when the... Uh, uh, the envelope is rising. So in this case, we've still got LFO1 uh, driving the function generator 1. If I drag rise across into the uh, scope, we'll see that uh, if, if I adjust the attack time to, to zero, you'll see that a trigger, a gate, is being generated uh, every time the envelope is rising, this section here. It's not sending one 
uh, when it's falling. You can actually do that. Um, there is a, an option in the modulation matrix that will send a gate signal uh, for the release phase. In fact, let's have a look at that. If I go to function generator 1, there it is for the decay stage, rather. So I'll dial up decay. So you can actually send um, uh, signals based on the decay stage. But what we're doing at the moment is looking at the... Because um, I, can I can't, unfortunately, show you that in the... Um, in the function in the uh, scope but um, I can show you the rise stage and if we uh, open up the attack time increase the attack time you'll see that the the length of that gate is being increased by increasing the attack time so it's roughly now uh, matching the um, the waveform of the of the LFO now we can of course use that to trigger uh, other events or other indeed the other function generator so rather than perhaps set to an LFO we can set this to function generator one um, either the envelope uh, the rise time if I set it to rise every time that value is on you'll see it triggering um, every time the rise value lights it's triggering function generator 2. So we can have uh, the function generator being controlled by the LFO generating a, a, a an unconventional waveform which in turn is driving function generator 2 to create another um, unconventional waveform. The, the, it becomes mind-boggling at that stage. Now of course we can do it also during the uh, the still period when nothing is happening when the waveform is at its uh, lowest point. Um, or we can uh, use the uh, um, uh, the function one envelope to uh, drive uh, the function two envelope. So we're really getting into uh, head scratching territory. It's difficult to display the effects uh, on the scope of that, but uh, it, you do have that flexibility to, to route it any way you want to. Do have a look in the Hive manual for more details and some tips and techniques for the function generators. Uh, but finally, the other modulation source to mention is obviously the envelope generators. Now, these behave in the same way for almost all since I won't bore you with the basics of attack, decay, sustain and release sections. But the envelopes uh, can be uh, triggered by uh, gates. They can be uh, a one-shot envelope, or you can trigger the envelopes from LFO1 and LFO2. And that applies both to the amplitude um, or the modulation envelopes. They also come with a variety of uh, preset shapes. So uh, you can dial in, for example, medium pluck, short pluck, basic polysynth, sound, slow, pads, etc. And you can, can of course, create your own uh, presets and save these away. And you can copy and paste between the various envelopes if you want to match, uh, say, the amp of envelope 1 to the amp, uh, amp 2 uh, envelope. You can copy and paste between them. Now, if you really want to boggle the mind, you can modulate each stage of the envelope too. So if I take, for example, the LFO output and assign it to the attack stage, and I drag uh, up on there, I can actually modulate the attack stage of amp, of, um, amp envelope 1 with the LFO. Um, similarly, I could, for example, take the function generator, uh, let's take the rise section, and... Uh, modulate the sustain uh, the mind does boggle in a downward direction so you can really go to town with the modulation it is it is a modulation monster uh, hive 2 that was a pretty accurate description um, and uh, as you as you can see the possibilities are almost endless and a lot of them are non-musical but you can actually uh, create some uh, interesting rhythmic patterns and some uh, interesting variations subtle variations by all the various modulation options. So let's analyze this really creative patch called AZ Light here. And uh, if we look at the uh, function generator, we'll see that uh, it's in uh, a one shot mode. It's being triggered by LFO1. And it's uh, if we have a look down here, the function envelope is, is set to modulate oscillator one tuning. Now then there's a quantized setting which is set to a minor chord. There's also a sample and hold, which is being also being triggered by LFO1. And the, the slew limiter is set to smooth, so we can expect notes that glide slightly between one another. So let's have a listen to the patch. So we're controlling the, uh, the pitches. If I adjust the shape of the function uh, generator, the 
effects there. Now let's um, speed up the LFO. Let's switch off the slew limiter so uh, you can hear the effect. There's the, uh, the raw pitches. And the slew limiter just uh, acts a bit like uh, portamento again, so let's put it onto smooth. Beautiful patch. So that about brings things to a close for this video. I thought I'd end with a small arrangement, uh, a quick arrangement, just made up of Hive 2 patches, uh, mainly percussive patches. This is uh, one called Beatmaker. And uh, Joking Stomp is a Howard Scar bass patch. Galaxy Harp, Pulsar, and Sheet Metal is another percussive patch. So, uh, thanks very much indeed for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already done so for future videos on synths, VST instruments, and music technology in general. I do hope that uh, the three videos all encourage you to have uh, fun exploring all the various modulation options in Yuhi's Hive 2. So thanks very much for watching and let's have a listen to this uh, arrangement. <laughs>